Let's talk about a simple survival kit you can carry just about anywhere. Let's jump into it. Okay guys, today we're talking about my PSK, but we're talking about my PSK from a different light. So more than just talking about a survival kit that can be carried, or more than just talking about my personal survival kit, we're going to talk in this video about some ingredients of making a very simple survival kit that can be carried everywhere. Whether you're backpacking, hunting, camping, hiking, bushcrafting, practicing wilderness self-reliance, horseback riding, doing quite literally anything in the bush, or in the wilderness, in the wild, or outdoors. This is, or at least some components of this kit, can and should be carried every time you're out. So let's jump into this. So like I said, this is my personal survival kit, and as an Alaskan that spends a lot of time outdoors, and especially as an Alaskan that spends a lot of time way out in the heck of middle nowhere, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, which actually doesn't take that long to get to being here, um, it's very important to have some a handful of really important goods to help you survive if you just so happen to have a vehicle breakdown or you can't make it back to civilization for whatever reason. So let's talk about that. So on the outside of this kit, and I think that it's important that this is on the outside of the kit because you want the things on the outside of the kit to not only be securely attached to the kit, but you also want them to be very readily and easily accessible. So on the outside of this kit, I have a very basic uh, first aid kit. It's kind of hard to get to. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a little bit hard to push out, once again, securely uh, put in here. But I do have a first aid kit here, and there's nothing amazing or incredible in this. Obviously, with a kit this small, which is not much bigger than my hand, as you can see, uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to carry a full hospital in here. And, you know, working at a hospital, I do realize there are a lot of things that would be very nice to carry on body at all times. You know, having things like tourniquets or having many of the different nice bandages that we have at a hospital, you know, would be nice to carry in here, but is also heavily unrealistic because of simply the fact that you, you can't carry a whole med card around on you at all times. It's just not real. So, anyway, Ways, small simple first aid kit that can handle you know small band small uh small injuries, small things, and really what it's more for is preventing any unnecessary infections and relief of minor ailments. By and large by and large, what's far more important and strapped to the outside of this kit is the PLB, or Personal Locator Beacon. Now, this one right here is an ACR. It's a Rescue Link 400. They do make different types of Rescue Links ACR, and they are my favorite favorite, but they are also not the most capable. Uh, other PLBs or personal locator beacons would be things such as um, the Garmin InReach or the Spot devices. The biggest thing I like about the ACR is that there's no subscription required. So for me, I like this one because it's kind of a register and forget kind of piece of equipment. So you can just, or you have to register this with, um, I'm trying to remember who it is, but one of the, you know, like, national uh, agencies and once you register your beacon it's in their database so if you ever use it they will get notified and you know they can obviously rescue you so um, you do have to do that but after that the use of this is super straightforward I do have my antenna taped down but it's also very easily accessible and you can just rip this tape right off pop the antenna and go from there but uh, in addition I also have it tied to the bottom of this pouch but it's still very easily accessible and very easy to get to at all times which is very important to me so that is my PLB and I highly recommend if you are going to be in any serious terrain if you're going to be on the water if you're going to be doing anything more serious outdoors carry a PLB because these things are very easy to deploy but can be absolutely absolute lifesavers and for me in a survival situation you know I'm going to activate my PLB and then use the rest of this kit contents to basically wait it out until rescue comes so that's the basic game plan so make sure you have a PLB they're very useful okay so jumping into the actual core of this kit so I have some paracord here 
Um, honestly, I use this pair of cord quite frequently when I'm out in the wilderness, so it is rotating in colors, but it's always about 10 to 12 feet. Uh, if you have watched my previous videos, you will probably notice it used to be green, then it was tan, now it's brown, and like I said, that's just because I keep using it, and you know, I keep going through paracord, but I do make sure that my PSK, whenever some ingredient is utilized and it is a, you know, tangible like this, that it is replaced. So aside from that, uh, I also have a my first space blanket in here. I have two space blankets. This is a smaller, kind of lighter duty one. Uh, this one is one that I would use more for kind of wrapping my body around, or <laughs> my body, uh, wrapping around my body rather. And uh, that's how I would use this one. So next to that, and in order of importance, I have my fire starting methods. So I do always have my ferro rod, as you could probably notice, on a lanyard sticking out, and that is so that if I do need to start a fire, I can just pull this out. Um, granted, I would have to unzip it a little bit. This isn't just going to fall out, but I make sure that my ferro rod always has its lanyard sticking out so that I can just unzip it a little bit, rip my ferro rod out at any point, and I have absolute access to fire starting. It's just that important to me. So next to that, I have a lighter, and this is a Maritac peanut lighter. And the reason why I specifically carry this one is that one, it's very small, very streamlined, but two, it does have a proper seal. So I filled this up over a year ago, and you guys can see that it still, to this day, starts up first strike every time. And I do periodically check this. I recommend you guys do as well if you carry a lighter. But this peanut, so long as it's properly sealed, will hold its um, lighter fluid indefinitely. So that is my lighter of choice. So next to that is matches. So if the other two methods fail, uh, I also have the backup of matches. So just have some waterproof safety matches in here. And of course, some quad ought uh, steel wool. And the quad ought steel wool can be used uh, as well for fire starting. You can strike it with a ferro rod and it will light up. Or you can use batteries and it will also light up. So that is my fire starting stuff. I also have a few tinders in here. Stuff like live fire, which is not my 100% favorite, but does work and once again very small, very streamlined. Next to that, and still in this central pouch, is my first or is my primary way of water purification. These are just iodine tablets. They work well. Replace them every couple of years, but these work you know, just fine. And in this kit, they make a lot of sense because in this type of kit, if I have to solely rely off this kit, I'm going to be uh, purifying or I'm going to be catching water with plastic bags. And obviously I can't boil those plastic bags. So I have to have a non heat related way to purify my water. And that is what iodine does. So that is why I have the iodine in there. Now, I also have a little bit of snare wire, and the reason why I have snare wire in here is be for two reasons. One, you can use this for snares and, and such, but also this stuff is super thin, reasonably robust uh, cordage. This stuff, once again, if you hold it up to paracord, is so, so much thinner and so much easier to carry, but is also going to be for its you know, for the diameter of the wire is going to be reasonably robust. Once again, I probably wouldn't put my whole body's weight on this wire, but it is still going to hold up pretty well. So if I need to lash something together, it's also not the easiest because it is metal wire, but it does work. Okay, so then the last thing in the middle compartment is this kind of roll. And this roll is very specific or very, uh, there's a lot of intention with it. So on the core, you guys can see uh, this is my Mylar blanket. This is my primary one that I would use for shelters. And I have it wrapped in this bandana. One, because the bandana is useful for secondary reasons, but it also protects the Mylar blanket from getting scratched or damaged at any time uh, because most Mylar blankets are unfortunately reasonably fragile. You want to make sure that you protect them properly. And then I also have three rubber bands. And so 
Each component here can be used as a standalone, the rubber bands, the bandana, and the mylar blanket, but they all work together to kind of form this unit uh, that one, protects my mylar blanket, and two, keeps it, uh, keeps it ready to be used. So that is kind of that whole, um, that is that whole unit together. Okay, so looking towards the back of this container or this pouch, I have my uh, consumables, and this is something that, once again, I've been questioned for a long time, and I answer in quite a few videos about, you know, why do I have things like instant coffee, why do I have Cliff Bars, and the simple answer is that uh, mental health is also a big portion of survival. So, you know, once you stop, you build your shelter, you've signaled for rescue, you know, and you're waiting, you want to make sure that you stay, you know, mentally, uh, you want to make sure that you, you know, stay as mentally happy as you can. And a simple or easy way to do that is to, you know, have things to eat, you know, not to feel as hungry, not to feel as thirsty, or, you know, to have a warm drink. And so, you know, having some instant coffee, if, you know, I can, helps boost the morale, helps boost, you know, your overall happiness. And granted, you might not be very happy in a survival situation, but the little things you can do to help increase your mental health helps play a big role in your overall survivability. So that's what's back here. The only other thing that's back here is my whistle, and this is a Fox 40 uh, Mini, or I think they call it Micro. Uh, yeah, they call it a Micro, but Fox 40, they produce some amazing whistles. They're actually a company that's just dedicated to making whistles. Uh, they make very loud, very effective whistles. So I highly recommend Fox 40 for all of your whistle needs, but I do have that obviously for close range uh, signaling if someone's searching for me you know they're yelling in the woods you know i can use the fox 40 micro to get their attention so then turning it over to the other side of the kit this other side is solely focused on fire starting so i did mention the live fire back here but i also have ust wet fire which is one of my go-to fire starters and even if it's crushed like this it will still work very well um, and then i also have some tinder quick so I carry Tinder quick in here, if I can worm one out of here, uh, because, uh, so I carry the Tinder quick because Tinder quick isn't the most effective fire starter, but I try to use this to offset uh, any of my use of wet fire. So if I have, if I have to start a fire and the conditions are more favorable, like if I can get a fire started with reasonable ease and it's not wet out, or, you know, I'm not trying to start wet tinder, uh, I will use tinder quick because if I use these little tabs, then I don't have to use my better fire starters. So I just use those uh, in a pinch to offset. And even on top of that, that's also why I carry the live fire is to help offset uh, my use of my better tenders. So like I said, I'm not a huge fan of live fire, but if conditions are favorable, I will use live fire first so that I don't have to use my better fire starters. Um, yeah. So that is the basics to this fire, or that is the basics to this survival kit. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing wild. Uh, it covers the five C's of survivability, I think, in a very effective way. I also totally almost forgot to mention over here is um, plastic bags. So I have a handful of small plastic bags tied up with um, rubber band. So this is what I do for water catchment. So I can go to a stream or a, a body of water and capture water with these plastic bags and then purify them with the iodine tablets. So almost forgot to mention that, but that's how I do water with this kit. So yeah, this is basically the survival kit. Uh, you know, it covers all the five C's of survivability and then some, and there is some hyper redundancy with some of these pieces, especially with fire starting. And, you know, that is another question I do get asked a bit is, you know, why are you so redundant on, you know, fire starting? And that's because, in my opinion, fire starting, especially when we factor that survival is most important, like you're trying to survive 72 hours, uh, the first 72 hours are the most important. And so in that 72 hours, your greatest needs are going to be having a solid shelter or cover. And... Um, 
and fire. So when you factor that those are your two greatest needs, you also want the highest redundancy in those. So that's why when you see that I have multiple Mylar blankets, when you see that I have multiple fire starting methods, it's because the most important in the short term uh, survival components are cover and combustion. And so you want a degree of redundancy with those two components so that you can effectively get those uh, things taken care of and you can meet your needs adequately. So that's why I have those redundant, but aside from that, um, that is my basic survival kit, that's my personal survival kit, but ultimately a kit like this can be carried and should be carried by just about anyone, just about anywhere, you know. Uh, things I would recommend to add to this would be things like a knife, but the reason why I don't have a knife or a saw in this kit, and this is another common question I get, is uh, I don't believe in having tools that I know are inadequate. So I could easily put a tiny fixed blade. I even have fixed blades that would fit in this uh, kit, but they would be grossly inadequate for actual survival practice. You know, I could put a saw in this kit, but it would be grossly inadequate for the type of tool I would need. So this is really a kit that can be carried everywhere for general purpose survival, but it should also be augmented with real knives. You know, like this is a, a real knife, and maybe you would even carry a larger knife than this little LT right Legome. But, you know, that is a real knife. I would carry a real saw, you know, something that can fit in your pocket, but that can actually get work done. So when I'm I am frequently asked, you know, why don't I have you know tools in here? It's because I'm supposed to carry them outside of this kit. This kit is not this kit is not intended to support real tools because it's simply too small. But anyways, hopefully you can take some of the function, some of the form, and some of the premise behind this survival kit. I've put a lot of thought and a lot of years of experience into this kit. So hopefully you guys can glean something from this. And hopefully this has helped you guys out in your practices, in the wild, whatever you're doing. As always guys, God bless and I'm out.